new kid on the block. But from which family? If this really is a Citroën, then it's looking pretty chunky. Just as well, given that the Air Cross is the French car maker's first foray into the compact SUV segment. It's 4.34 meters long and is at home both off road and on the asphalt. We first check out the front wheel drive version. The front makes an imposing impression with its LED lights, side air intakes, and horizontal lines. The model is also available with four wheel drive, but both versions are designed for challenging terrain. Both the two-wheel and four-wheel drive versions can go off-road, assures us Citroën's Stefan Lutzenkirchen. In the former, it's simply due to the higher construction, the higher ground clearance, and the tire dimensions. With four-wheel drive, you have a menu to select whether you want regular four-wheel drive or the lock option for really tough terrain. Citroën is covering its bases with its sights set on the growing compact SUV market. The C4 Aircross certainly looks like it means business, but it still has some of Citroën's classic features, and not just the familiar double chevron. The sharply rising window line is dramatic, and there are plenty of other reminders. The rear is a no-frills affair in comparison, excepting a few chrome logos and trim. The transmission needs some pampering, with the gear changes choppy at times. The engine, meanwhile, is a far smoother affair. This is the HDI 115, explains our Citroën spokesman, the middle engine of the three available. All three are geared, he adds, to respect the environment with stop-start technology. The HDI 115 combines the desire for performance with low fuel consumption and emissions. The desire for performance and performance on the one side and higher consumption and emissions on the other. According to the manufacturer, the C4 Aircross takes 4.6 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. The price tag is just under 28,000 euros. The interior and cargo space are ample in size. With the rear seats down, you can pack in up to 1,193 liters of luggage. The cabin was designed to be ergonomic, which largely seems to have worked. The aircon controls, however, are awkward to reach around the gear stick. The car beeps an alert if any doors aren't closed before driving off. The instruments in general have a convenient layout. Passengers dispatched to the rear will find plenty of space here. The newly developed four-wheel drive system takes into account drive input, terrain conditions, and current speed. That ensures optimum distribution of torque to the front and rear wheels. We switch to the four-wheel drive model for some off-road action. We immediately notice the transmission's impressive response to muddy terrain. The reinforced body contributes to the precise handling and tracking stability. But one question remains. Can Citroën really make the transition from regular road to cross-country adventure? Citroën now offers what Ford and Volkswagen have for some time, says our car tester Stefan. The C4 Aircross is a compact SUV with the full package, front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive at the turn of a knob. All in all, he concludes, Citroën has made a sound start in the compact SUV segment. When it comes to eco-friendliness, efficiency, safety, and comfort, 
It's in a class of its own. No other diesel bus in the world runs cleaner than the new Citaro from Mercedes-Benz. It already complies with new EU emission standards due in 2014. The new 7.7-liter .7 six inline motor delivers 220 kilowatts of power with a maximum torque of 1,200 newton meters. State-of-the-art technology also brings significant fuel savings. The additional energy storage supplies power to the onboard network as needed, explains Frank Mando of Mercedes-Benz. When the bus is coasting or driving downhill, for example, it's generating electrical energy, and that's stored in a type of supercapacitor. So that stored energy is channeled back into the onboard network to power the interior lights and the information displays, for example und geben sie dann bedarfsgerecht an das Botnetz ab, um zum Beispiel die Innenbeleuchtung, Fahrzielanzeige äh, damit zu versorgen. The process leads to a tangible drop in fuel consumption and cuts CO2 emissions by more than 2%. During our test drive through the city of Wiesbaden, we asked passengers to share their impressions. At the press of a button, a ramp can be extended automatically at the rear door, just one of the Sitaro's optional extras. The latest model is between 3 and 5 percent more fuel efficient than its predecessor. That adds up to around 1,000 liters of diesel saved every year. So what do passengers think? This woman really likes the luxurious interior with its parquet flooring. He also likes the modern feel. He says it exceeds what people would normally expect in public transport. The silver fabrics are a marked contrast to what he knows from his home city of Berlin. But it will all depend on how the interior holds up over time. He reckons most passengers will find it much different to their normal public transport experience. As a mother, this woman loves the folding seats. In other buses, her buggy is often in the way of other passengers. She says having this extra space here is just perfect. A 92-year-old woman gets on at the next stop. What does she make of the new Citaro? She's astounded by how stylish it is. The smooth ride impresses her. The bus doesn't jump around as much on bumpy roads, she says. Our elderly passenger says comfort is a high priority for her, much more important than the vehicle's looks. And getting off the bus was also no problem. At the Wiesbaden Bus Depot, we meet Jörg Faust. As a professional bus driver, he sees the new Citaro from a different perspective. The first thing he looks at is the driver's seat, where he sits for eight hours a day. He's impressed with the seat's adjustability in all directions, and there's plenty of leg room. In other buses, he can only adjust the steering wheel height. In the Citaro, he can change everything. The distance is always optimal, and the buttons are easy to reach. Plus, the radio controls are directly on the steering wheel, which means both hands stay firmly on it. The new cockpit design has other advantages. In the event of trouble, the driver can block an attacker with his door leaving an escape route free. Compare this scenario to the older model bus. On the test track, we put the Citaro through one more challenge. How does the bus cope with an emergency maneuver? In fact, the Citaro handles surprisingly well through the cones, thanks to the standard-fitted ESP. 
and that means more safety for everyone, driver, passengers, and other road users. BMW's revised version of the X1 will soon hit the streets. Along with a fresh look, the X1 also has a new motor under the hood. It's the Bavarian carmaker's first four-cylinder diesel engine with a twin turbo. Fuel consumption comes in at 4.5 liters at 120 kilowatts. Volkswagen has released its new Polo Blue GT. Packing 103 kilowatts, the new DSG version uses just 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers. The TSI engine with active fuel management is one of the top new features. On an easy drive, it uses only two of the four cylinders. At a constant speed of 50 kilometers per hour, VW says you can save one liter every 100 kilometers. The Hyundai offshoot Kia was never known for exciting design, but our test driver Matas Kurat says that's radically changed. German-born Peter Schreier has taken over as chief designer, and one of the results is the new Kia Rio. The Rio has been around since 2000, with the third generation coming out in 2011. Our test car has a 1.4-liter gasoline engine delivering 80 kilowatts. The manufacturer puts consumption with a start-stop system at 5.3 liters per 100 kilometers. The Rio starts selling at 11,000 euros in Germany. Our test car is the premium spirit version priced at about 16,400 euros with optional extras. But you get a lot of car for your money. The exterior is solid and stylish. At about 4 meters, the Rio is slightly longer than the VW Polo or the new Peugeot 208. That'll make parking tougher so the optional reverse camera is an attractive extra. The new generation Korean car has little in common with its predecessors. It's as if this Kia has skipped an evolutionary step in design and technology. There are no rattles or rumbles. The car feels responsive on the road and gives a pleasant feedback. The trunk has 288 liters of storage space, more or less in line with its competitors. The Rio we tested is packed with luxury features, keyless ignition, multifunction steering wheel, and cruise control. There's even a heated steering wheel, heated seats, and a built-in GPS navigator. Altogether, the optional add-ons cost about 1,700 euros, but they're well worth the price. The Rio makes a positive impression. It has a good quality look and feel, solid drivability, and a sleek design. With an ample set of features, the Kia Rio is worthy competition for the VW Polo and others in its class. The museum at Volkswagen's Autostadt is home to over 100 milestones in automotive history all steps in the evolution and revolution of the car. Our test driver today, Christoph Bauer, is spoiled for choice. After much deliberation, he decides on the Austin Healey 3000. British roadsters traditionally had a reputation for having a rough but rewarding ride. This Donald Healey creation was the quintessence of the concept. Donald Healy was a wild guy, explains Christoph, an Air Force pilot, racing driver, and winner of the Monte Carlo Rally. 
When a guy like that builds his own car, you can bet he'll come up with something special. Welcome to the Austin Healey 3000. The deployment of volume production by parent company BMC cut costs. The 3000 costs the same as the lowest price Porsche, but packed double the power. Plenty of performance for a low price. That's how Christoph would sum up the Healy. 150 horsepower might not sound impressive, but this inline six cylinder delivers a dizzying amount of torque, even in the low rev range. So just the right thing for the swinging 50s and 60s. Those who failed to leave skid marks at the lights never got the concept of Healy. The Austin Healey is no cruiser. This is a macho roadster for real men. It does take some power to operate, it finds Christoph. You need meaty calves for the clutch and brakes. As for the steering, this Brit isn't so keen on curves. And when your driving gets too aggressive, you might find the rear swerving. So Christoph can understand how it earned its nickname, the pig. Out on the racetrack, the big Healy was out to upset the nice guys. Even professionals like Pat Moss found it tough to tame. But in 1960, she celebrated her greatest triumph. The younger sister of Formula One legend Sterling Moss drove an Austin Healey 3000 to overall victory in the Liège-Rome-Liège -Liège rally, the most challenging road race in Europe. The Austin Healey 3000's production run was between 1959 and 1967. It boasted a number of elements that were ahead of its time, says Christoph. It no longer has the side curtains you'd normally find in British roadsters. Here you could wind the windows up and down. The folding top was also very modern. When up, it protected you from the wind and rain. Of course, you immediately notice this wonderful two-tone finish. It nicely underlines the 1950s design, as do the lovely spokes. This car is a real sight to behold. This Mark III version was the last built between 1963 and 1967. The enticing classic design was carried over with negligible changes from that of the predecessor model, the Austin Healey 100. Luscious Connolly leather, toggle switches and chrome-clad instruments set in a wood panel dashboard, a classic old-school Brit. The spectacular sound and sumptuous power are the work of the BMC C-Series engine, originally designed by Morris. The 150 horsepower fitted in the last version gives the Healy a top speed of 180 kilometers per hour. But despite disc brakes on the front axle, push this baby to its limit at your peril. The Austin Healey was not designed for every man, admits Christoph, but two things really do bug him. The upright sitting position feels more like a horse-drawn carriage than a sports car. Plus, the incredibly low ride height makes a Ferrari look like an off-roader. It's no wonder that spare parts, like the exhaust, are in such demand. Obviously, the Austin Healey is no pushover to drive. It's a blast from the past that dares you to tame it but that's what makes it appealing. A famous German auto journalist called the Healy a roller coaster, a sheer cliff face, and a rocket in one. And Christoph agrees. Drive it aggressively, and you get a permanent adrenaline rush, either from dreading the next bend or from the joy of having mastered a critical situation. As roadsters go, they don't get any meaner or more British than this, and certainly a milestone in automotive history.